drawer boxes are in. Alex had a good week. These are maple plywood drawer boxes, handmade, and we've got soft closed glides on them. So they take the drawer in and lock it. The last one here is a dedicated drawer for your cooktop, your double induction cooktop. And you can take that out, put it here to cook. You can take it outside. You know that song. Anyway, I'm hoping to not have to use any hardware. When these things come in and close, there's a good amount of pressure required to open them again. I don't want any hardware. No latches, no clasps, no locks. Next step is to put the walnut drawer faces on. This is going to be the solid reclaimed. Or we've been having such great luck with our edge bander. We might actually do this out of walnut plywood and edge band it. Not sure yet. The reclaimed walnut is beautiful. And that's where we can cut in our, our handle. Again, I said no hardware. Because when you're working in here, I'd like this to just be smooth. That's a pretty good amount of force to open that drawer. So I'm hoping that when you're careening around those curves, these drawers will stay closed just as they are. And then you'll have that nice walnut. Now, over here on this side, we got the same thing. We got maple plywood drawer boxes. This is your armoire, your dressing station. So we've got a couple of deep clothing drawers and on top a little bit less deep, but this could be for your socks and underwear and whatnot. Same soft closed drawers. Once those glides grab it, they pull in and lock them. That's that, the, the armoire, closet area. Closeting, hanging clothes is not that big a deal in a van. You hang a few things. So we've got room here to hang clothes this way. And what I'm gonna to try to do is develop some sort of a slide mechanism for the hanging bar. The hanger goes this way, not this way. So you could pull the bar out, take something from the back, put it back in. I have an access panel back here, four screws, the whole panel comes out and you can get behind it. If you see what we got going on here, there's a lot of room behind the cabinet for insulation and airflow, as I said. Now the big deal with this is the detail that Alex is bringing to this project. These are our walnut drawer fronts and they are edge banded. This is a, a beautiful detail. Once the glue reservoir is up to temperature, step one, load your pre-measured edge band into the cannoli machine. Now you're ready to apply it to the edge of your first side. Remember, there are four sides to every drawer face. The machine dispenses the glue and tracks across the material at a pre-selected speed. The edge band material is shipped in a large roll, which gives it a bow when cut to size. Through trial and error, Alex has learned that pressure on the ends of the band during setup helps in keeping the band true and square to the drawer face. Once the glue has set up, the next step is to trim the excess off the ends. This step is made precise and simple with a rather simple and precise tool developed just for this task. Ah, fest tool. You can tell a lot about a person from his cardboard recycling. With the ends trimmed flush and square, the next step is to trim the edges. Here, a router with a special bit is used to trim off the excess edge band as well as round over that top edge. This machine does such a good job, there is very little sanding required. Now Alex carefully puts a lanyard around his neck, attached to a finely crafted piece of carbide metal. This is the same material that is bonded to each and every tooth on your finer table saw blades. Why the lanyard? Two reasons. First, the wrap of string angles the blade downward towards the material. Second, if you drop it, it will shatter into a million pieces. Its only purpose is to remove any excess glue and wood frays from the very edge. A lost art performed with modern day tools. 
And now we move on to the second side of edge number one, and so on and so on. Craftsmanship, precision, and care. Is there any other way? So this cabinet is going to have walnut drawer fronts, just like the galley. This is walnut plywood, and this is grain matched. And what I mean by that, Alex start it with a full sheet of walnut plywood and he calculated the saw kerf, the spacing, the thickness of the edge banding, two millimeters, and then he also figured in these aluminum strips. So he laid all that out on the sheet. He removed this portion from the sheet, grain matched all the way through. You would want to remove this so the grain stops here, removed, starts up again. That's the kind of detail he's bringing to this project. Another feature of the Class A of Class B's is an appliance garage. And not just any appliance garage. This baby is made out of walnut. It's a beautiful cabinet. It's grain matched. It's edge banded. It's removable. It slides in and out. And again, you see this little jog cut back here, this angle? Access, ventilation in the back. Behind this panel, I've got over six inches of airflow for my refrigerator. It comes all the way up the back and out here. You see this, I've left this air gap on all my modules over here for the airflow. And Alex Grain matched it. He took one single sheet and made this even right down to the edge. He mitered in a little return piece here. Grain match, look at that. That looks like a waterfall it flows right off the edge. This is beautiful. When this gets oiled up with tongue oil, it's gonna sing. Here's the problem. I don't wanna cover it. I don't wanna put doors on this. It's too pretty. And it gives you such a, a sense of space in here. It's vast, right? Your Vitamix, toaster oven, Nutribullet, what are you gonna put in here? I gotta work on this. I don't wanna put doors on this. This is a beautiful cabinet. The grain, I just wanna try to figure a way. Maybe I gotta put a couple of three polished steel rods across here uh, to hold everything in. I know, I know. I gotta make everything difficult, right? Unheard of, but if I can make this work, it's gonna be beautiful. That's right, the futon is back out into production. It's on the work floor again. As you know, I designed and built a whole futon all by myself. It took me three weeks to design it and build it. And I wanted that futon to recline and do everything you wanted it to do, almost with your mind. You just had to work a few of your stomach muscles to recline it and bring it back up. And it worked. Yeah, I got it working. Then I took the van for a test drive and it fell out of tune. That means it's too finicky. It's just too delicate a process with the pulleys and the cables and the counterweights. It's a project for another day. So I dismantled my futon. I took all that 8020 apart and I cut it up and I use it in different areas. There's no sign of that futon any longer. It's gone. It never existed. The back of the futon when it's against the van wall, needs to pull forward in order to turn it into a bed. If you can see, imagine this futon was against the wall. As soon as you go to a bed, it's, it's gonna hit the wall. You need to pull it out away from the wall. So that's what this mechanism is for now. I'm going to put this in the van. Let me show you what I got here. This is literally the floor of the van, my marmoleum cork-backed this is the floor of the van right here. Okay, the futon sits on the floor and this is a fixed member of the frame that will be fastened through the floor. The jog back there is the part that goes into my recess where the water tank sits. Now the other problem with my first futon was that 
I had to make that futon very high to accommodate my water tank. I had a five, 45 gallon water tank sat in half the futon space underneath. That wasn't working for me. It was too high. It was uncomfortable. You know, we're used to standards in furniture. You want to sit comfortably and put your feet on the floor. This was not right. It wasn't working. There are some uh, J lounge sofas in class A's that are too high. And if you know what I'm talking about. So that's another um, improvement I made to this. This one now is normal height. Uh, that means I can't use the water tank I have. So my 45 gallon water tank is going to get repurposed in another van. I ordered a new custom tank. It's lower, narrower, but it's longer. So now that tank takes up the entire space under this futon couch. And that's another reason I'm using this futon frame. You can buy what's called a zero clearance futon frame. And as I, as I explained, when you pull it down into a bed, it won't want to go back and hit the wall. It swings down on its own to zero clearance. It'll just go right down the wall into a bed. The problem with those in my application is all of the guts and mechanisms to make that zero clearance work are under the futon. They've left no room under there for me to put any of my systems or mechanicals. When you're in a van, everything needs to do double duty. I needed space under this thing. So that's why I have this one and I'm making it work. This is going to be very easy to do. And then there's a lock right here, a lever lock on each side to keep it in position. So back to the water tank. We've taken up the whole futon base with a nice low slung water tank, 47 gallons. I, I was able to add two gallons. The benefit now is because it's a narrower tank, we've got about 20 inches of depth from the front of this futon back underneath. There's nothing here for 20 inches by five feet. So I'm going to be putting in some drawers, maybe two massive garment drawers, maybe three 20 by 20 drawers under here. Nice. You will only access these drawers when it's a couch. When it's in bed mode, you won't be able to get at them. So if you did decide to put your bedding in there, you would want to take the bedding out, put it on the couch before you deploy it into a bed. But excellent storage. Within this space, I've got a couch, I've got a double bed, I've got my water tank, and I've got all that drawer space. That's how you build a van.